This book is some bullshit. Pretty Boy Floyd. It took two people to write this trash. I have been a huge Larry McMurtry fan for decades. The Last Picture Show is one of my all-time favorite books. I bought Pretty Boy Floyd because I was curious about Pretty Boy Floyd. <laughs> but it reads like a cartoon. I don't care about the characters. The protagonist, Pretty Boy Floyd, is an aw gee shucks country bumpkin from Oklahoma who gets a lot of pussy, so right away I can't relate. Uh, but you don't have to be able to relate to a character to feel something for the character, and I feel absolutely nothing for any of the characters in this book. So it's a failure. And it took two people to write it. Larry McMurtry and Diana Asana. <clears throat> this orientation trips me out. I think I'm looking directly at the camera. Uh, but I wanted to do this rather than the webcam because you can't edit with the webcam or I can't. I don't have an editing program on the desktop. So I'll read an excerpt from this ridiculous book. I do like that it's set during the Great Depression because the next book that I write, my next novel, is going to be set in the Great Depression, Texas in the Great Depression. And it was a different time. It's very exotic, the vernacular, the way people spoke and dressed and related to each other in a very real, visceral, bare-bones kind of way before all this media saturation. People walking around married to these rectangles. Everyone's a social retard these days, and I'm just done with it. No manners, no class whatsoever. People knew how to relate to each other back then. They knew how to talk. They knew how to get shit done. I like the outlaws. I like the lore around the outlaws. <clears throat> it makes total sense to me. I don't know why these people like Pretty Boy Floyd and Machine Gun Kelly and Babyface Nelson and Dillinger and Bonnie and Clyde are so demonized or villainized, I mean, is there some nobility in just working the plow and feeding your family a bowl of beans? If you're lucky, a bowl of beans each night, it's disgusting. It was disgusting, the stark disparity between class in America and the Great Depression. I would have absolutely been running around with a gun. So, an excerpt. <sighs> Chapter 23. Charlie got a big surprise when he walked into the little Otis hospital. Whiz Bang Red was sitting in the waiting room crying and she looked older. Hello. Charlie said cautiously. He was glad to see her, but he wasn't sure she would remember him. Charlie, she asked, evidently not sure it was him. For a few seconds, neither of them could think of what to say next. Here, sit down. Pardon my manners, Wisbang said. My boyfriend got hurt in the rodeo. I ate myself. Your boyfriend, Charlie said, trying not to let disappointment creep into his voice. It seemed his bad luck with women was becoming a pattern. Your boyfriend ain't George Birdwell, is it? Charlie asked. 
Just as he said it, a frantic-looking couple burst through the door. The man, a leather-skinned roughneck, was carrying a little girl who looked terrified. Where's the doc? Sissy's got an eraser stuck up her nose, the woman said frantic. Oh, God, I hate it. I hate that fucking book. I finally just skipped ahead to the ending. I wanted to see the shootout at the end and see how pretty boy Floyd died. And I felt nothing. Whereas the last picture show, I've read that novel numerous times. And I read the last few pages few nights ago when I sobbed, It Always Gets Me, and the movie, the last scene with uh, Ruth Popper and Sonny Crawford, it always hits me like a ton of bricks. That's good writing.